Hello, everybody. Once again, this is another Oral Washington rant. Um, once again, I'll be continuing on the topic of the law of love. Um, just to get the definition of the law of love again, um, the law of love states this, states this. It's the systems or rules that are enforced through a variety of different feelings, state, and attitudes within a social institution that governs the behaviors. So, well, with that being said, let's go into some go into um something more deeper. Now, let's 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 talk about the actual relationship status. Okay, um, okay. Let's let's say right now that you're, you're talking to to your significant other. Um, you got to got to know them very well, and this within uh, most of us we go through the the ninety day rule, which the ninety day rule is actually part of the law of love, but. Um, Anyway, we, we, we go through the, the law, um, go through the 90 day rule. And so, and this person is still around. And so you're really feeling this person. And, and so at this point, the, what the average person in a relationship would do is they begin to uh, set, set up a, a contract agreement between each other in the relationship. And, and uh, you, may, you may say that, you know, now we don't set up a contract agreement. What are you talking about? Um, you know, well, what do you mean by that? Well, when you set up a contract agreement in a relationship, this is what you do. Um, you either meet each other at a certain place, uh, whether it's at the house or, you know, wherever, however the situation happens, you know. It happens in, in different situations. It could be at the house. It could be at a restaurant. It could be after you got through having sex with the person or where, however it happens. You end up at this point going through a, a contract agreement. And this contract agreement, uh, the basic foundation of the contract agreement basically states, uh, you know, different different um, wants and desires and needs, you know, say between each other. Um, for the most part, you know, you'll, you'll say something on the lines that um, you don't want a person to hurt you because you've been in a previous relationship with a person hurt you. Or you'll go through the lines of saying that, you know, you want more attention because the other person will give you more attention. Or you, you go through the lines that uh, you don't like a person who smoke weed because in your other relationship, the person smoked weed or did drugs, and you don't like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, I mean, there's, there's different things that you begin to put out on the table about, you know, your likes and your dislikes and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's on dealing with something physical, mental, or, you know, um, spiritual as well, you know. Um, and so you begin to place this contract agreement each other and basically within a contract agreement it states this is that if you end up on breaking any one of these parameters that we're setting forth then that is going to be a deal breaker which uh, a lot of us know what a deal breaker is you know what I'm saying so that would be the deal breaker right there if you go through any one of these things it'll be become an instant deal breaker then the relationship either is going to um, go through a series of uh, hardship or possibly even um, the relationship we're in right then and there, you know what I'm saying? You can even call the relationship a pre-divorce even though you're not married, you know what I'm saying? But that, that's that's what happened when, when you get ready to set the contract. Then once when you, uh, just like I stated um, in my first um, rant about this, uh, and I stated about once when you finish um, interviewing a person uh, and their application and stuff like that during business-wise, you know, uh, you seal it with a signature, but in the relationship wise, you seal it, you know, with a hug and a kiss and stuff like that. And then likewise with this, you do the same thing in the contract is that you seal it with a hug and a kiss and you agree to these terms and stuff. So well, what I want to reveal to you is that uh, when you enter into relationships like this and stuff, um, um, you actually place an allow within the relationship itself. And this relationship itself um it's going to have one or two things going to happen. It's either going to be successful as long as you stay in the parameters of the law, you know what I'm saying, of the relationship. But if you break the parameters or if you break the law of the relationship, then it's going to be void. The contract is going to be void. It's going to be terminated, which entails that the relationship is going to be term, uh, terminated, which also entails that if you break any rule, like say, for example, if you say that you um. Uh, not to cheat in a relationship and you break that rule so what it is by law 
um, it entitles for the other person to go out and cheat as well. You know what I'm saying? Because by law, you say that you wasn't, but you broke the law. So you're going to have to face the consequences of breaking that law. You know what I'm saying? Which is, you know, the other person's going to be hurt. And they're going to go through this whole process of, you know, that you done cheated on me and, you know, all this stuff there. Then eventually, um, they'll go and cheat on you. You know what I'm saying? Some people do it out of spite. Some people do it out of pain, hurt, whatever. Whatever way they do it, it ends up happening that way and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, like like I was saying, uh, well, when you have a relationship like this, you have, to bow, you have to bow down. You have to be in that particular bondage of the relationship. You know what I'm saying? If not, then it's going to fail. You know what I'm saying? But the whole purpose of this on Rent Series is that I'm trying to offer... What I'm doing is offering a different perspective about relationships. I'm offering the perspective that if we actually open our, uh, our mind, you know what I'm saying, and actually our heart and spiritually understand each other and stuff, right, then you don't have to necessarily go through the, the actual contract relationship, which is destined to fail. But you could do something even more greater than that. You know what I'm saying? It could be something more greater than that, you know what I'm saying, which is you breaking the, the, the law of love itself, you know what I'm saying, where you don't be in this uh, particular um, law. So, I'm not put it to you this way. Um, yeah, I'm not put it to you this way and, and understand. Let's let's talk about this in a metaphysical state. Uh, there, there's, a, uh, there, there's a religion that teaches about the, uh, the seven uh, chakras and stuff, right? There, where we have a total of seven, seven um, gates of chakra that that we um that that we have that that possesses through our energy and stuff right so um within that and stuff right one of the number one rules about this on um, teaching is that that um you have to allow your chakra to flow naturally and stuff you know what I'm saying the chakra have to flow naturally if it doesn't flow naturally it get clouded then everything be all messed up and stuff you know what I'm saying so you have to release the chakras every gate of chakra you have to release that you know what i'm saying you have to let go of certain things you know which i'm not going to go into details right now in this rant about the seven chakras and stuff there's another rant for another time but doesn't know that in the teaching you you have to release the chakras likewise in order for uh true unconditional love to flourish the way it needs to do they need to be is that it have to be released. You know what I'm saying? It can't be controlled. It can't be doctor. It can't be controlled. It can't be placed under a law, under bondage or anything. You know, you know what I'm saying? Because if it be placed under that particular law and bondage, then it's going to fail. It's, we we know that it's going to fail. We could talk about this even in um, biblical terms. Many of us, are, you know, we believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is no different from the, the chakras that I'm telling you about, which is the Holy Spirit is nothing more, nothing more but spiritual energy that you allow to um, flow into your body, you know what I'm saying, to manifest itself into your body, you know what I'm saying, to do miraculous things. But in order for the um, the, the, um, the Holy Spirit to operate, you have to do certain things for the flow. You have to unlock certain things. You have to learn to forgive. You have to... um. Learn, learn to um, you know, uh, you have to learn to forgive. You have to learn to love. You have to learn to let go of the world, and you know, different stuff like that, which is the same exact equivalent thing, or you know, about about the one seven chakras as well. You know what I'm saying? So, in order for love to fully function the way it needs to be, is that it has to flow naturally. You know what I'm saying? It has to flow naturally the way that the the way that the Most High intended it to be. You know what I'm saying? But when you place rules and regulations on it, then it's not going to flow at all. It's stuff. It's going to, it's going to be very destructive. It's going to be a very destructive force. You know what I'm saying? Love is designed to be unconditional. It is designed to have no conditions on it whatsoever. When you meet that person, you already know right off the bat what type of person that you're meeting and stuff just by them opening their mouth and talking. You you know that um you know that that dude is a thug or whatever and stuff like that. You know the girl's ratchet, or you know that the that the one dude is you know he's a um a respectable man. You know what I'm saying? And you know she's a respectable woman, stuff like that. You know different things, but also at the same time you have to understand that everyone. Is going to have negative things about them. Everyone going to have negative things based on how the way they've been brought up, how they've been raised, uh, different traumas that they didn't deal with in their life. But it's our responsibility as one another to come as one 
is for us to understand one another, not to change one another, but actually understand one another. You know what I'm saying? To fully understand each other to a point where um to a point where you could allow each other love allow each other love for one another to flow where you're not being judgmental, you're not trying to change them, uh, anything. And that's where that's our problem with humanity is that we got in this mind that we got to save everyone, including our, including ourselves and other people around us and stuff. You know what I'm saying? And actually, it got to come to a point that we have to want to deal with ourselves too, deal with the reality of ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Once when we deal with the reality of ourselves, then we can deal with the reality of other people as well. You know what I'm saying? Uh, where you begin to accept one another, you begin to have sympathy and empathy for people. You know what I'm saying? If that person the way it is, that does how the way they are. But you can't change it only. It's two things how how a person can actually change. It's by by a person actually, you know, admiring another person and respecting them so much. It's the way they admire way where you want to challenge them to change. Not with what you making them do it, but they'll naturally want to do it. You know what I'm saying? So likewise that's the same thing. Even with love itself, you have to naturally make it happen. You know what I mean? So my time is up on this one particular um rant episode uh, and I'll go more to more in detail as um, time permits until then um, like I always fight faith with faith um, I'm praying with with y'all peace